For nearly 20 years, Patches did the same thing. He tempted us with treasure and trapped us. He had a few methods, but his favourite was holes and kicking people down them. But in Elden Ring, something isn't right. Patches is different. Eventually, we find him in the Volcano Manor, and he seems to believe in something. He is helping. This isn't the Patches we know, solitary and cynical. Whether he is untethered, unbreakable, or untrustworthy, he always seems to be the same old trickster. Patches the hyena, the cackling scavenger, the body-kicking corpse looter. What's going on here? Why would he turn up at a place that he warned us about? And my warning was spot on. You tell me different. Stay clear of Volcano Manor. End of discussion. I heard the brutes there hunt tarnished like animals. And yet, here he squats, the Volcano Manor, a place for the strong to rise by strength and become heroes, even if it's by killing their own kind. Patch's killing methods aren't based on the jewel. <laughs> Some might say just by looking at him that he doesn't fit in here. His philosophy of sneaky survival is not to the manners approach of might is right. So. You killed Rikard. I harbour you no ill will. The strong take. Such is our code. At first, we don't notice what made him change. He's giving us regular patches. Chests, traps, overacting. Oh my! Well, here you are again. Oh, so sorry for that. I, I meant to warn you, but whoop! <laughs> there you went. But it was the hint about helping Raya that put us on edge. By the way, uh, have you met that girl Raya? She's a strange one, but I believe she was in need of help. Not that it's any of my business, but if she rings your bell, why not lend her an ear? Patches, hinting that we help a maiden, the man who idly sits by as Raya of Thurland, one of the most charming and gentle characters in all of the From Software games starves and hollows in a hole right beside him. He didn't help Rhea because, well, he kicked her down the hole. So why the sudden change of heart in Patches? Patches' history, well before Elden Ring, might tell us why. The first clue is who Rhea was, a member of the clergy. Patches' connoisseurs, or Soulsborn fans as they're sometimes called, know Patches and religion have history. Patch's relationship with organised religion, its clergy and clerics, is complicated. It is also murky. We may not ever find out his exact reasons, but Patches hates clerics, and as he claims, the fraudulence of organised religion. He says to them, You damn clerics! You're worse than maggots! This hate seems to continue across every game, with the one exception being Bloodborne. What a joy it is to behold the divine. It must be such a pleasure. But this isn't really an exception. Patch's obsession with the clergy is that they are frauds. Don't you be fooled by his claims to do good. They're all the same, those rotten clerics. Take your higher cause and stuff it, you lousy charlatan. Yet the power and reality of the godlike beings in Bloodborne is very real. So Patches respecting them isn't contrary to his character. There's no fraudulence here. So it seems that it's the fakery that upsets Patches. The taking advantage of the hopes of the weak with, in his view, the empty promises of superstition. Well, I have news for them. Praying has not put food in my mouth, nor anyone else's. Of course, we shouldn't assume Patches is all good. He likes to put the fear of God in others too, when it suits him. You scheming little thief! The gods demand repentance! The gods demand vengeance! Vengeance! Not to mention that the hate he feels for the clergy is mutual. The Acolyte of God has some things to say about him. He is a depraved, vile man, and he deserves no allies. 
and the much-loved Rhea comes the closest to bad language that she can when describing him. Vince and Nico were fooled by a lout named Patches and turned into hollows. And even those with more in common with Patches, cynical, solitary characters such as Grave Robber Blige or Lord Trek, don't have good things to say about him. Have you heard of Trusty Patches? If ever a man has rubbed me up the wrong way, if he ever comes around again, I swear I'll have his hide. There's somebody I ought to warn you about, a fellow who lacks common decency. They call him Patches the Hyena, and he's the one that laid that trap for me. He's the kind of person who'd stab his mother in the back. Unsurprisingly, Patches claims the opposite. Every age, it seems, is tainted by the greed of men. Rubbish to one such as I, devoid of all worldly wants. <laughs> Nothing here is stolen, I swear. I no longer partake in the whole corpse robbing thing. Yeah, no, I'm completely free from my vice. My old mother would be proud indeed. Though the phrasing would implies his mother may no longer be with him. Hmm. Did Patches live a life of hardship? Did he lose his mother to the clergy? Did he grow up as part of a church and suffer at the hands of clerics? Or was he always how his detractors describe, the worst kind of vagabond? This hate for the clergy affects gameplay. In Dark Souls, if we tell him we are a cleric, there is no chance for forgiveness. He attacks if we climb out of the trap hole. His quest ends. This history, put into the context of Elden Ring, seems to set things right. The Volcano Manor is blasphemous. It is against the gods, the Golden Order, and the Two Fingers. Patches himself goes on to say, I always hated the gibberish about Lost Grace and the laughable Two Fingers. I thought I could lend a hand in unmasking the charade. But we think this is a lie. Patches has always hated religions of every game, but he has never been motivated to do anything more than kick clergy down holes and loot their corpses. Why would Elden Ring make him behave any different? In the past, there has only been one motivation that worked on Patches, to get him to act, to get him to risk anything. Caring about someone. The one time Patches did more than scavenge was to save the life of a friend, or something close to it. Grey Rat freed Patches from imprisonment in the past, and Patches wanted to return the favour. He pretends that he's asking where Grey Rat is, simply so he can strip him down for treasure if he's croaked. But this is a lie. When Grey Rat needs it, Patches saves his life. But he decides to hide that he cares. I might have died if it wasn't for that peculiar Onion Knight. Patches tricks Grey Rat into thinking it was an Onion Knight who saved him, and takes no credit. Why? For now, we will say, Patches is very secretive about his emotions. And so, Patches' story of why he is at the Volcano Manor begins to unravel. He isn't there to fight against the Two Fingers or the theory of Lost Grace. He is there because of how he feels for someone. Because we think, for the first time in any game, and after nearly 20 years, Patches is in love. He might be free of all worldly wants, but perhaps his feeling of love isn't a worldly want. After all, Patches isn't shallow. He doesn't fall for just anyone. The debatable first Patches had dealings with a character who many men would fall for, but not Patches. He robs her and bails. But he met someone who fits his bill in Elden Ring. A dancer as flexible as he is a blasphemer, a woman fighting against the organized religion of the land. Can you say, soulmate? Patches doesn't even see her face, but to him, she's beautiful. He plays it pretty cool. He has plenty of practice at pretending he doesn't care, at hiding his emotions under layers of cynicism. 
All he says at first is, Tanith has always made me curious. I guess her master must really be something, because she's pretty damn smug about it. Even after announcing her blasphemous ambitions, she still stands proud. I've never seen a woman quite like her. This already seems affectionate for Patches, but eventually he reveals the depths of his true feelings, if we pay attention and follow his quest through to the end. More than being drawn to the Volcano Manor by Tanith, he is deeply concerned about her. When we waver in our commitment, he says, Do you remember your vow to Tanith? He doesn't remind us about our struggle against our oppressors or the lies of the Two Fingers, only Tanith. When we succeed in a kill, he uses any excuse to see her. He suggests, I'll give Tanith the news. Have some rest by all means. Perhaps he only wants the reward, or perhaps it says a little more. And after we slay Rikard, Tanith grieves the death of her lord. Patches notices her suffering immediately. The demigod beast is slain, and Tanith has lost her head. This isn't the most tactful comment, but this is once again him wearing onion armor. Patches cares, because what does he do next? He goes on a quest. Patches risks his life to retrieve her dancer's castanets, all just to cheer her up. He gets severely injured. It seems he literally risked his life. This isn't at all like Patches, someone who survived to the end of the world in Dark Souls 3, simply by not caring. He even admits he's only in this mess because he followed a different path, a unique path he found in Elden Ring, the path of love. This unfamiliar path got him in trouble, but he was willing to take it, because that's the real treasure. It's a treasure valuable enough to risk his life for, and he ends up how we find him. <sighs> oh, you, you, you again. A shame you had to see me like this. Oh, I, I had a bit of a slip up, that's all. I should have stuck to what I know best. No matter, I know I, I can trust you. Gullible, yes, but uh, a good soul. Make certain that Tanith gets this. Oh, it's, it's nothing, it's just makes me sick to see her all bent out of shape. Come on, Tanith, back on your high horse where you belong. You're able then? Then I can rest easy, my friend. Sadly, when we deliver his gift, Tanith shows her true love for Rikard, even after his death. What is it? I have no need of that. I must continue devouring my beloved lord. Patches is nothing to her. We can't help but feel sorry for Patches. He finally felt something, but his love was unrequited. Should he have known better? He calls us gullible time and time again, but isn't he gullible too? To think he could compete with Rikard. Whether or not he was gullible, is he a hypocrite? Well, thought you'd just help yourself to a man's personal belongings, huh? Patches surely reasons. When it's a snake man, it's totally different. Ironically, if he hadn't been a scavenger and a coward, and risen as a hero, he would have likely become one with Rikard, and then would be becoming one with Tanith. But it was not Patches' destiny, and Patches, being Patches, bounces right back. He recovers from his wounds, body, heart, and soul, and gets right back to his old tricks. But he took a very real risk when he fell for Tanith, and this story may help us understand a bit more about Patches, about the confusing meaning from software may be putting into his recurring appearances. Patches is a cynic. It seems he's had the veil lifted from his eyes. He sees the hurt and coldness in the world around him, how trusted carers can, in fact, be some of the worst demons out there. 
He doesn't go mad at the reality in Bloodborne, because it may not surprise him. He expects people to be bad. In every game, he accurately describes and warns us about the moral shortcomings of other characters, well before they cause problems, such as Petrus, Lord Trek, Yurt, and more. Of course, he might be right, but no one feels warmly about Patches either. He may feel that, in some way, everyone is kicking people into holes and stripping their corpses. So why not do the same, but without the pretense? And if it's done to the worst frauds out there, all the better. His attitude and response at the way the world works is summed up well by one quote in Elden Ring. Worked to the bone by their high and mighty lord, only to be thrown out with the rubbish. <sighs> it's the same old story everywhere I go. <sighs> to hell with it all. So, he chooses to survive as a solitary scavenger, and stays safe by not caring for anyone or anything. Emotions are a risk. We get a glimpse at a brutish, early form of this mindset with the potential first patches, who also happens to be one of the only surviving humans found in-game. He thinks everyone is an enemy. And he does survive in other games with this approach, to the end of the world. But while it may be safe, Patches is alone. Is this one of From Software's and Miyazaki's messages? That if we turn away from the risk of caring, to only see the harsh truth of the world, and give back only what the world has given, that we might survive like Patches, but we might find it hard to care again, and end up alone. Being a cynic is safe after all, and the alternative can be brutal. In the end, Patches is a mystery, but we think maybe he's incapable of not caring.